So Dr. Sandhya Pruthi has been the principal investigator at Mayo Clinic for several nationwide multi-center breast cancer chemo prevention trials. These are interdisciplinary efforts with the Mayo Clinic Cancer Center, and she's also actively involved in cancer education for both patients and healthcare providers. In addition to that, she is a general internal medicine physician and associate medical director of Mayo's Global Business Solutions, which is how she got so close to this topic of voice first. So first thing I'm gonna ask you is if you could tell us a little bit about what you're doing at Mayo Clinic with voice technology. Great, yes, um, welcome and thank you for um, having me here, Laura. We um, at Mayo Clinic have spent 150 years um, optimizing health information. Uh, we began with print and then went to web, smartphones, mobile, and now voice. Um, and what's exciting about what we've been able to do is take voice technology and better understand the value and what it can bring in terms of efficiency to the clinical practice or the clinical setting. So um, I use a motto that we, um, we like to use at Mayo, think big, start small, and move fast. And an example of that was our work in the first aid skill with um, Amazon. And we initiated this project to just take our health information of common everyday scenarios that you may need first aid and built a, a third party app with Amazon. And um, this skill was very well received and um, we were excited by the number of users and the interest in building health information using a very simple topic around first aid skills. And um, what then happened was the um, excitement around optimization of our our skills in voice, where Amazon approached us and asked us to help with building out a health information library, co comprehensive, using our content on the web to put out 8,000 um, conditions, procedures, and symptoms today in a first party um, effort through Amazon. So today, if a patient was to use um, Alexa or a consumer and say, what are the symptoms of a heart attack? And it would say, according to Mayo Clinic, um, these are the uh, symptoms. So what we've really done there is provided more of a search and command. You get single facts of information when the consumer wants it. Where we want to go is um, becoming more interactive, engaging with our consumer. So um, people can basically ask questions to get health information where they are, which is often in their home. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. So, and, uh, so talk to us a little bit about what this may mean for provider patient interaction moving forward, the role of the physician, and what may become next. So um, we um, did take that to the next step, and we wanted to, at Mayo, look at where we could improve that provider-patient interaction in the clinic. And a, a, a wonderful project was initiated um, in our dermatology clinic where we wanted to put a smart speaker in the room so that the um, patient could get um, instructions, post-discharge instructions around the management of the wound when they went home and, and in essence help the provider by taking that um, time that they were requiring to explain the post-discharge instructions around the care of that wound and allowing the uh, smart speaker to provide that information um, when they needed it. We're doing another really exciting project in the emergency room where our colleagues in the ER want to take, for example, undifferentiated chest pain and um, put a smart speaker in the ER so that it could again help the provider um, where the, the patient, the family member, could ask questions of the smart speaker um, such as, um, what is 24-hour observation? What is the stress treadmill um, test? Um, what is an EKG? So we're not making diagnostics or treatment um, recommendations. We're providing education at a time when the patient needs it. Um, but even more um, where we, we could go in terms of patient experience is in the setting of their home. And we're, we collaborated with a company, um, Sensely, to build out an avatar using our nurse symptom triage algorithms in a voice capability um, with visuals in the avatar so that they could get that information on self-service from their home. 
What, it, what, is, what are you doing in the context of making the doctor more efficient? Are you looking into some of the things that we've heard about that are possible there? Um, we, we are. I would, I would like to say that that would be the next thing. Being a clinician who sees patients, and I spend a lot of time in the cancer area, and I would love to be able to um, speak in the, in the conversation I have with my patient and hope that the EHR could pick up my conversation and build out and transcribe my note and help me place the orders and eventually um, create a, a voice um, a capability to reduce the clerical burden that I have to do in the clinic. But I think there's even another more exciting area that where the provider could be more efficient is think of voice as a biomarker. Um, and a um, example that Mayo published some work in our cardiology um, area where they looked at patients who were having angiograms um, and looked at the voice characteristics, the utterances, and then um, sim similarly captured their angiograms and looked to see if there was a correlation between voice as a diagnostic marker to potentially predict um, who was going to develop coronary artery disease and um, was able to show some pretty impressive correlations there that I think it could help us better manage our patients if we could use voice in the, as a clinical diagnostic tool. That sounds fabulous. Uh, what are you concerned about most in the context of privacy and uh, inhibitions to this initiative, things that you see as possible constraints? Sure. Um, I think that's a, a big issue is right now everything I've described to you is um, general health, so we're not using any patient-protected um, health information in, in all of these tools, um, examples. I think we're, we're going to want to be able to make the voice um, technology more engaging, more interactive. I would want it to be empathetic to the needs of my patients, and can voice actually do that and get into um, uh, helping us meet the needs of the patient where they are. So I gave you examples where search and command would give us, well, what are the symptoms of? But where I think artificial intelligence and um, using um, natural language processing, we could actually take the voice to the level of where it can understand my patient's needs and remember what those conversations were so that the next time you get back to your device, you could say, well, um, why does my back hurt? Or I'm still experiencing symptoms of fatigue. And think about how artificial intelligence could make it a more um, a contextual knowledge uh, base uh, inf uh, tool for information that the patient and the, uh, the smart speaker could interact with. I think that will require more of a privacy and um, data security um, challenges, and we're not yet there, and I, I think that will come as we continue to explore this um, space further. But I think that's where we need to go. In the research I, I was doing for this report, I heard about something called the emotion chip uh, which is that it, uh, they want to be in everything that can basically sense uh, what level of emotion you're feeling um, and uh, help diagnose whether you're falling apart. Um, so let's think about the future uh, of this technology, both at Mayo Clinic and as adopted throughout the healthcare system. Do you see a, a, a time frame? Is, are we talking three years, two years, five years? So can you imagine having voice as part of your entire healthcare journey before you need to be seen by a doctor, the navigation, the uh, helping you as a, a triage, the examples I described as self-service, and then voice in the clinical setting, and then voice when you leave home and have your um, smart speaker there so you can request the medication reminders or health information when I need it. Um, I think that is where the digital um, patient experience is going to go. Uh, mm -hmm. Can I imagine a time when voice could do all of that for us? I think um, in three to five years we're going to be there. That would be um, my dream. Um, we have some challenges to overcome, but I think that if you can plan and, and describe what that journey could look like, I could see voice being an assistant throughout the entire healthcare journey. 
I just wonder, uh, a quick show of hands. Um, how many people in this room were involved in some pilot or use of voice technology in the work that they are doing? Well, that's a pretty good show of hands. OK, so we know it's early, uh, that uh, this market has a long way to go. Um, but the fact that you can actually map to 8,000 symptoms, you can ask questions about that. Uh, the rest of the healthcare industry, what, what pace do you think the other hospital systems and health systems are going to take? in picking this up? You know, that's a great question, Laura, and I, and I actually um, think back to the fact that we did spend and invest a large amount of our, at Mayo Clinic, our editorial teams have been put together to develop this health information um, library, expert review, constant review of the accuracy and trusted information that we're giving, and today our website has received a lot of hits, and we know that that's played a big role in what allowed us to move into this space so quickly with our comprehensive information, health information into a voice device such as with Amazon and now Google Assistant. So I think, um, I, I think other healthcare organizations who have invested in health content um, well, for the consumer um, could move and do similar um, uh, advantages, take similar um, uh, uh, efforts in making it happen for their patients in their respective organizations. Uh, it just takes a lot of work and commitment, and I was fortunate to be part of a team at Mayo where um, they saw voice as the next technology um, two years ago, and look at where we are today. So it can happen, um, but it, uh, it takes a big team. I do love the phrase, meet the patient where they are. And I love also the concept of the fact that the most natural thing we all do is speak. Yes. And yes. so uh, great potential there. It's great what you're doing at Mayo. And I want to thank you very much thank for you. your time on this. Thanks. I think we're running to the end of our slot. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.